Hey, Susie. Hi, Jimmy. <laughs> you know, of all the people talking about the stats of how many passes, can you talk about the buy-in of the receiving core and just the mentality that, that this receiving core sets for this team? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's rare. It's something I've never really been around. And uh, I don't know, just um, especially last week coming off the field, I think it was after our second drive or something, those guys were yelling, you know, we need to run the, run the ball. And you just don't see that every day out of your receivers. And so when everyone's, uh, you know, that bought in, it's, it makes for, uh, for a good team. Jimmy Kyle's known for his X's and O's acumen, but how is he as a motivational speaker on Saturdays before games, and how have you seen that evolve from him over these last few years? He, he's been great at it, you know, and uh, it's not always the same, you know, motivational speech or, or fire you up type of speech. And he just, um, Kyle does a great job of feeling the team, feeling the room, and however, mm -hmm. and, you know, the vibe of everyone. And he just, uh, I don't know, he seems to always say the right things in the right moment. Yep. Hey, Jim. Uh, when you when you first got here, uh, you came from an organization where there probably wasn't a lot of emotion and, and you were used to winning. And then the 49ers won that first game uh, against the Giants at home. And some of the guys said they celebrated it like it was the Super Bowl. What do you remember about that? And, and what do you what do you remember making of all of that? Um, well, yeah, it, uh, it was it was different to me. I'm not going to lie. Just, uh, you know, it seemed like a regular, you know, normal regular season game. And I. Uh, I can remember we were, I mean, throwing water in the locker room, boom boxes were going, everything. And it was just, uh, it was the accumulation of that whole year, I think, just everything those guys had been through before that. I mean, I wasn't there for all of it, but you could see it. I mean, and so to get that first win, it was so much just emotion coming out of everyone. And it was, uh, it was real. And that's what, that was the first thing I saw with this team when I first got here, was just everyone was very honest and real and genuine. And that's, uh, you know, that's where it all starts. And I think that's what makes us a good team. Uh, many coaches and players talk about their first Super Bowl experience and like before the, you know, whether it's the national anthem or, or a moment before the Super Bowl where it kind of hits them like, holy moly, this is the Super Bowl. You know, did you have that kind of moment? Um, can you relate to that at all? Uh, I haven't had it yet. Uh, I'm sure, you know, it'll probably come at some moment. Uh, usually the anth national anthem is when I, you know, really start to get locked in and just uh, everything kind of starts to settle down at that point. So. It's um, it's kind of one of those things. I guess we'll we'll see how it goes. Jimmy, over here. Yep. Uh, just what's been the highlight of the week for you, and and just how's the week gone, and how the practice has been? Uh, practice has been great. It really has been. We've been over at uh, Miami, mm -hmm. uh, the U, and they've been treating us great over there. Um, I wouldn't say I've had a highlight so far. I think uh, we had, we had a hell of a day today. At practice yesterday was great too, and it's just uh, you know, it's it's great being around these guys. You know. We well, got a couple, one more practice after this, and another walkthrough. But just uh, you know, the whole year it's it's been unreal. What well, what made today a hell of a day? I uh, I mean, it was just yesterday was too. I mean, it, it's been two good days of practice, and you know, I'm sure having two weeks to go over the game plan and, and get locked in like that, it's it's helped these guys and all of us. But I think just um, you know, we know what the moment is. Yep. Hey, Jimmy Jacob from Fox Sports Mexico. How could you assess your growth uh, as a quarterback in this league? I mean, from being a backup to New in New England to now um, playing your first Super Bowl, and what aspect of your game do you think has improved the most since joining the 49ers? Um, you know, I think uh, well, progress. I think I'm still, you know, hopefully progressing, you know, in the right direction and keep learning and keep growing as a quarterback. You know, I've only played so many games, still have a long way to go. So, uh, as far as that, you know, just getting started with that. But I think. Um, you know, coming into this offense, obviously it's a little different than what New England was, but just the, uh, you know, under center, things like that, play action, it's a little different than the New England system. So I think I've grown in those. Jimmy, yeah. Kyle was talking yesterday about how he's put more on the plate of Mike LaFleur and Mike McDaniel in terms of game planning. I'm just curious what your interaction is with them in terms of putting everything together every week. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's big. Those guys, um, it kind of depends which, which day it is, uh, whether which Mike I'm dealing with more. But uh, both of them do a great job of, you know, explaining the game plan. As complicated as our offense is and, and all the moving pieces that go with it, they, you know, they help me simplify it. Just so, uh, I mean, some of these play calls, you guys know, they're, they're like paragraphs that you're calling. So they, uh, they help me in, in every aspect with that stuff. And it's, uh, you know, it's gotten better as the season's gone on with those two. Yep. 
Jimmy, Kyle has talked about the scars from the Atlanta Super Bowl, and he's been very open, and he talked about how, in his word, freaked out at times when starters weren't on the field late in game when the game appeared to be over. What in your mind would it take, not just this game, but any game, for him to take the you know, foot off the gas? Uh, man, it takes a lot. It, it really does. I mean, just uh, what was this past game, I think he was freaking out on Salah a little bit. So... <laughs> But you like to have that mindset, you know. It, it, in the NFL, crazy things have happened. You know, uh, I was a part of a Super Bowl that, you know, was pretty crazy, 28 to three. So, I mean, anything could happen. You just got to. Uh, I think you have to stay locked in, especially a game of this caliber, playoff game, Super Bowl. I think just, uh, you know, you never know what could happen. What's going on, Jimmy? What's up? Earlier this year, you know, when the, you guys drafted Nick Bosa, there were some question marks surrounding, you know, some of his character, political choices, and how would he integrate into this team especially with such a diverse locker room. How did you see him work through that this year and become maybe one of the most you know, beloved teammates you guys have and someone that a lot of guys rally around? Yeah, I think uh, our locker room, I think any NFL locker room, I think um, you know, there's a lot of different views, you know, whatever it is. People come from all over the place. So uh, there's not too much judgment, you know, especially in our locker room. We got a good group of guys just that, you know, all see things very commonly, have the same vision. And, you know, Nick, uh, I mean, there was really never any talk or anything about, you know, whatever it was. But he came in and, uh, I mean, he fit in right away. All the rookies came in this year and it was kind of like that. And just uh, that's the type of team we've got. Hey, Jimmy, it seems like five years ago that we were asking you in May, you know, how your knee was and, and how this season was going to play out. I don't know about how you feel about it, but how would you describe how the season unfolded for you, given everything that you went through during the offseason to get to this point? Well, it's... Uh, and the knee's come a long way, definitely has. I uh, probably haven't really thought about it since about halfway through the year. But, um, yeah, it's just crazy. I mean, just going through the entire process. I mean, about a year ago, I was learning how to run again. And so it's just, I don't know, when you look back on everything, and it really makes you realize uh, you know, how special this moment is. So it's one of those things you can't really take it for granted. It's, uh, I mean, you don't know if you're ever going to be back here. So you've got to make it count while you can. Hey, Jimmy, great shoes, by the way. You say uh, that first. <laughs> it's good stuff. It. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering, how, if you've kept count, how many Tom Brady questions have you had to deal with this week? <laughs> At least 50% of them. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I mean, it's, oh, it's probably close to 50%. <laughs> that, yeah, add another one to it. <laughs> Hi, Jimmy. Hey. Federico Olvera for the Portrese. Uh, what are those words you use to motivate your teammates? Uh, talk, talk, uh, talk us about you. What's your style of leadership? Uh, you know, I, I really don't try to do anything too crazy. Uh, try to be myself. I think that's what guys respect the most. And it's just, uh, you know, when you could do that, when you, they see your work ethic and, and the things you put in, it's just uh, I think that's the trickle-down effect with the team. You know, if they see the captains and, and, you know, that group of guys doing more and staying in later and things like that, I think it just trickles down to the rest of the team and you get good results out of it. Jimmy, right here in the middle. I, I know Bill Belichick thought very highly of you as a player when you were in New England, so I'm wondering, how did that conversation go with him uh, when he told you you were being traded? Uh, yeah, Coach, you know, he was always very honest with me, and uh, that's the main thing I really appreciate about Coach. He, um, when he called me, there was really no uh, beating around the bush. It was right to the point. You know, he said he appreciated everything, and I said the same to him. I said, you know, thank you. I mean, the guy taught me so much about just the pro game and the ins and outs of it. And so, you know, I appreciate everything he did for me, all those coaches in New England. You know, my time there was, uh, it was, it was good. Jimmy, two questions for you. One, have you chosen which Jordans you're wearing in the Super Bowl? And two, <laughs> what are you doing, like, for downtime to, like, get your mind off football? Uh, I haven't decided on the Jordans yet. These are probably up there, though. These are some of my favorites right now. So, um, what was the second part? Sorry. Oh, what, for downtime? Uh, Honestly, we don't get a ton of downtime. We just, I mean, we literally came from practice. Sorry about being late, by the way. But uh, <laughs> it's, um, you know, probably spend a little time with my brothers, hang out with them for a little bit, uh, take my mind off things. But I mean, there hasn't been a ton of downtime. So just, uh, you know, enjoying the moment. 11s, maybe, yeah. Love the 11s. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, Jonathan Simmons from Real Talk Sports in Atlanta. So uh, you talked earlier about, uh, about your experience here in San Francisco. Uh, your coach mentioned something in his press conference earlier. He said that uh, he didn't have to constantly tell you that he loved you or pat you on the back, but you knew it. 
and the same thing with you and him, that you'd have to constantly go back with him. What does it mean for you that the coach looks at you as such a professional in the way you go about your business? Well, that's one thing I really appreciate about Kyle. He, um, you know, that, that's kind of the relationship that we have. It's, there's some things that are just unspoken that we both, you know, whether we're thinking the same thing or we see the same thing on the field, there's no words needed. And uh, I think that just, it makes us a great, you know, tandem. Uh, we've gotten to the point where, you know, he's starting to call plays and when he gets into a rhythm, I could kind of, you know, sense that and you get a feel of what's coming. Sometimes they'll throw you off, you know, keep you, keep you guessing a little bit, but uh, it's just, um, I don't know. I love the relationship we have. It's, uh, it's very honest and genuine and that's all you could ask for. Oh, back there. Hey, Jimmy, first of all, speaking of 11s, got you covered. Oh, geez, um, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, rel you're a relatively young quarterback in terms of starts. So who was some of the quarterbacks that you modeled yourself after just growing up? Um, well, I didn't start playing quarterback till you know, later in high school. Uh, so I kind of jumped on it a little late. But uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers, always loved watching him. I mean, the things that he can do with the football is, is incredible. It's not every day you get to see that. Um, Drew Brees, Tom, I mean, all those guys, you know, they just, uh, to consistently do it for as many years as they have, it's, it's so impressive. And, you know, it's, uh, those are the guys you want to base your game after. Hi, Jimmy, it's Ben from Switzerland. Hey. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, tell us how you're going to celebrate if you win that game on Sunday. <laughs> I haven't really thought about that too much. Um, I don't know. I'm sure some of these guys, you know, we got a we got a pretty fun team, so I'm sure they got some plans. Might have to jump in with them, but uh, yeah, we'll worry about that when we get there. All good. All right. Thanks.